If you want to skip to where the video starts, I'll put the timestamps down below and I also will show the time here on the screen. But before I start the video, I want to say a huge thank you to all of the support on my Sienna May body positivity video. When I made it nearly two months ago, I did not predict everything that is happening in the Sienna Jack world right now. It feels a bit wrong to be honest. That I'm gaining off of other people's downfall and struggles. I really hope to minimize the degree to which I do that by just continuing to make videos that get people to think. I'm not a person to take sides. I try my best to be non-judgmental and open-minded. So I want to talk about the Sienna Jack situation from a new perspective and something that applies to other similar scenarios. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't scared about the potential hate I'll receive for my thoughts in this video, but I decided, hey, my following is still small right now, so the chances of me getting cancelled are pretty slim. Plus, if I believe in free discourse, I better participate in it. So why do we make the worst people famous? It's a comment I've seen on many TikToks and posts about the Sienna, May, and Jack Wright issue recently. For those who are unaware of what has happened, recently Mason Rizzo, who is a friend of Jack's, tweeted that Sienna May, who was in a relationship with Jack, but actually it turned out to be fake, a lot of people just thought they were dating I guess. Anyways, Mason accused Sienna of telling Jack to go kill himself and sexually assaulting him on numerous occasions. James, who is Jack's brother, also quote retweeted Mason's tweet, but both Mason and James have deleted those tweets by now. Sienna has posted two videos to explain her side of the situation. I unequivocally deny the allegations that I sexually assaulted Jack Wright. After the initial claims that were falsely made by Mason Rizzo, I put out a video that showed evidence and was very well received because people could see the true intention. And there was also this video, which was at a party that both Sienna and Jack went to, and supposedly it shows Sienna kissing Jack and putting her hand near his crotch while he was unconscious. Like I said, it's got a lot of people asking why do we make the worst people famous? It's understandable why people wonder this. Every day it seems like another celebrity has screwed up, whether it's getting caught saying the n-word, talking to minors, partying during covid, or allegedly sexually assaulting your fake boyfriend. The general feeling seems to be, oh, these people are just horrible people and we chose wrong. If we had chosen better, then we would have people who deserve their fame. I want to challenge that notion today and talk about this from a perspective I haven't seen others mention, because I don't think it's that simple. Yes, there are people who are more horrible than others, but that's not where our focus should be. Instead, we should be thinking about how we choose and how we treat those people who are chosen. I'm a big believer in the social construction of identity, behavior, and morals. I don't think people are just born bad or born good. Societal environments have a huge impact on how people act and also what we deem is morally acceptable in the first place. I have a lot of issues with the way fame works these days, to the point where I worry celebrity culture and the way the public interacts with it is starting to resemble America's broken justice system. I'll get to that later on. Let's first look into the process of becoming famous, because this tells us what we value about people and how famous people are chosen. I'm going to concentrate mostly on individuals who have risen to stardom in the past year or so, because the way people get famous has changed a lot thanks to TikTok. It's so much easier to suddenly blow up on TikTok. For one, there are dozens of trends going on all the time, so you always have an idea of where the most views lie. TikTok has the engaging visual nature of YouTube, but not its long duration, which makes it easier to consume. And if you're a creator, TikToks probably take a lot less effort to make as well. On other social sites such as Instagram and Twitter, unless you're on your explore page or you click on a specific hashtag, you're not going to see content with that hashtag. 
But on TikTok, the explore page is your for you page where most users spend their time. So hashtags actually are effective. Now Instagram has reels and YouTube has YouTube shorts. So this ability to go viral is only increasing. But what do they go viral for? Well, when we look at the latest celebrities, what are some of the common traits they all share? Conventionally attractive? Yeah, that's about it. I'm sorry, but there are a lot of stars who only retain their fame because they are attractive. If you go through a lot of TikTok stars accounts, they'll maybe have a TikTok dance over here, some sort of trend over there, lip syncing. It's what any average TikTok user tends to do, except they've got the looks and usually the wealth as well. And this makes sense. All the new ways to get famous are visual routes. Filming a new TikTok dance, just vibing to music while looking pretty. Attractiveness is what gets you famous in this day and age. Now, of course, there are celebrities who work hard and who promote good messages, but their fan base still typically starts from their appearance. For example, a lot of people think Bella Porsche released a good song, so perhaps she does have musical talent, but that's not where her fan base originally came from. She got famous off of her looks. Even the celebrities who did originally garner attention for their talent, creativity, or good morals, appearance still somehow always becomes a part of the conversation. Activists on the front of fashion magazines, how pretty Olivia Rodrigo looks is somehow factored into how much of a talented queen she is, even though her talent is just music. What this means is that we perform virtually no background check on the people we hype up. Our criteria for famous individuals, in other words, the values we want famous individuals to possess, have become quite shallow. I believe this explains why we want celebrities to be good people in the first place. There's a common example in ethics where Hitler hypothetically donates one million dollars to a children's hospital, and the money is 100% legit. The underlying premise is, can we separate the character from the good deed? Should we take the money because the money is good money and it's going to do something good? Or should we reject it because Hitler, the character, is morally atrocious? Except this dilemma no longer applies to modern fame, because now when we make random people famous for shallow reasons, there's not some good deed that they're providing unless you count looking aesthetically pleasing as some sort of service to our world. So it makes us feel better if they are good people. Then we can say, phew, see, I'm not shallow, she cares about body positivity. What is it like to be a famous person nowadays? Obviously, I can't fully speak to that, but there are certain aspects of the famous life that we can understand because we also experience it, just to a lesser degree. It's the ability to mold our identity into whatever we want other people to see. And unsurprisingly, most of us try to form a perfect image of ourselves. All we know about someone is the online content that they post about them, which is to say we don't know them. Yet the problem with this is, because identity has become equal to online content, we simply assume that so long as there's no footage or public callout of a celebrity doing wrong, they are unproblematic. They have no problems if there is no record of it on the internet, right? This is an assumption that is doomed to fail. Everyone has done bad things. Unless you're the rebirth of the Messiah, I don't believe anyone who says they've never done anything in their life that would be considered problematic. I mean, I certainly have. This creates huge pressure for celebrities to stay unproblematic in hopes of avoiding the cancel train, which is good in terms of accountability, but let's think about how far we want to carry that threat, because the more we increase our accountability measures, the more we lose authenticity. 
Also, because being famous is now nearly synonymous with having a life other people envy, there is a high expectation for famous people to remain desirable. I touched on this in a previous video I made about Kid Core, but a lot of the latest stars are young, and they're expected to act like grown-ups. They're often surrounded by older celebrities who pressure them to date, have sex, party a lot, and look gorgeous all the time. Cause these are what cool grown-ups do. It makes them feel as though they fit into the famous world. And let's be honest, who likes being an outsider? I think this demonstrates the concept of pluralistic ignorance. These are situations where most people privately reject a norm, but they wrongly assume that the majority of others accept it. For example, maybe a lot of celebrities were uncomfortable about partying during the pandemic, but because they wrongly assume that everyone else wants to party, they pretend to accept it as well. They don't want to be the lame non-partier. Being famous is living in a high, high pressure environment where you have to make sure nothing you do is problematic, yet at the same time be cool enough to fit into the famous world. It's not hard to imagine why people completely change because of fame. It literally happens during the transition into high school, where the sweetest, most innocent people in middle school will suddenly be having their stomachs pumped in the hospital. Now magnify that pressure by a hundred. That's fame. We can and should condemn the wrong things famous people do. If Sienna sexually assaulted Jack, especially when he set boundaries already, she ought to face consequences. But. We should equally scrutinize the reasons why she does this, why so many famous people nowadays have problematic behavior. What kind of culture and norms are we creating for these famous stars? Are we, as their audience, complicit in the making of worse people? When we hear a famous person has committed a wrongdoing, how do we react and how do we treat them? Simple, we cancel them. Until they come out with a video explaining their story and maybe you sway to their side. But wait, more videos come out demanding we cancel them and so maybe you sway back to the other side. Regardless of which side you stand on, it's clear that we always make celebrity drama to be a black and white issue. For the Sienna and Jack situation, you're either wholeheartedly supporting Jack or you're a horrible human being who never believes sexual assault victims. This false dichotomy drives me nuts, especially because so many people act as though they understand everything. Before I continue further, I want to remind you that I'm not some sort of Sienna May fan. If you've watched my Sienna May body positivity video, you'll know that I took issue with her body positivity platform, so I'm not dying to defend her or something. What I am trying to defend is fairness. I can be sympathetic with Jack and be skeptical about what is true. It doesn't have to be 100% Sienna side or 100% Jack side. Recognize that all we have access to is what they carefully edit and deliberately choose to release to the public. There is so much that we don't see and hear. We were never actually at that party where Sienna was supposedly kissing unconscious Jack. We are not Sienna and Jack themselves who are the primary actors and who know their relationship best. It's fine if you want to believe the victim first, but don't use that as justification for attacking others with genuine skepticism. I saw some people asking why Jack's hand was moving if he was supposedly unconscious in the video, and why he continued to hang out with Sienna months after if the sexual assault was real. I agree with responding to these types of misguided comments by saying, look, when you're unconscious, your hand can still move, and a lot of the times victims of sexual assault may not speak out right away because they're scared of the perpetrator, or they might not even realize they're a victim until way later on. I agree with these responses, but there is absolutely no need to add on attacks like, oh, you're so fucking stupid for defending her, or you're just a 12-year-old Sienna Mae fangirl who's delusional. 
I also hate how our first immediate response was to cancel her. It's funny how when we talk about the legal justice system, we always praise about how amazing it would be to have a rehabilitative system where the accused and the imprisoned receive treatment, help, and support to reintegrate themselves back into society as better citizens rather than locking them up and deeming them evil forever. Yet the usual reaction to celebrities messing up is to cancel them. And the worst part about cancel culture is that once you cancel someone, you can't take it back. If you do, you're called an apologist or a fake supporter. But this is not about loyalty and it's not about being right. This is about being fair. Is this not what is wrong with our punitive justice system right now? The creation of permanent guilt, where if you commit a crime, it is on your record forever, and it affects how other people view you forever. It doesn't give you a chance to ever change. The punitive justice system has a focus on punishment and a desire to find people guilty. It lacks understanding and critical thinking. I see so many people saying things like, I knew Sienna was going to get cancelled, or I always knew there was something off about her. And it gets me wondering, how many people already wanted Sienna to suffer negative consequences before any of these allegations even came out? And how do those preconceived notions affect the way they assess the current allegations? Preconceived beliefs play a big role in unfair treatment and unreasonable consequences from the justice system, especially for racial minorities who face harsh stereotypes. There's a great podcast called Serial which goes through court cases, uncovering the bias and underlying superiority complex that a lot of judges and policemen have, and the way lawyers manipulatively play into those biases and complexes in order to win the case. So please, ask yourself, how are the people speaking up about Sienna and Jack using your biases to convince you? To continue with this justice system analogy, I view Mason and James bringing the allegations online as a parallel to bringing a case to court. And we are the jury. They made this choice to publicize the situation, to have our judgment. And so I think they should have given us more to work with. Again, they've both deleted their original tweets about the situation, and they've kept pretty quiet since then. I'm not saying Jack has to make a statement himself. I understand that as a victim of sexual assault, it can be difficult to speak up. But just as how clients have lawyers in court, Jack can have his friends or brother speak up on his behalf. I just don't think they should have made the situation public if all they were going to do was provide a line of accusation without further evidence or explanation. And I'm sad to see so many people having drawn a definite conclusion when there's a major lack of evidence and conversation between the two sides. All we have right now is the court equivalent of witness testimony, which is when people who were involved in the case speak up about what happened. By the way, witness testimony is some of the most inaccurate, untrustworthy evidence in court. Because human memory sucks. I'll link some papers down in the description box if you want to read about research and studies on this, but basically, human memory is not made to remember everything exactly the way it was. No, human memory is designed to make information useful. So statistically speaking, nearly half of the events Sienna talks about in her videos could be remembered wrong. Honestly, the most useful piece of evidence right now is the party video, because unless that guy was a Photoshop master, that is visual evidence of Sienna and Jack interacting in a sexual situation. It's still not great though, because it's clearly chopped up and edited, so we have no context for what happened before and after. If there's one thing that you take away from this video, it's that we should be more critical about the content we consume. And maybe these problematic famous figures didn't start off as the worst people. Maybe we made them that way. Thank you so much for watching. Let's keep talking. I hope to hear from you soon. Bye!